The standard of care when we're extracting teeth is to have some form of airway protection in place for every extraction that we do. Now the reason for this is that it only takes a split second for a restoration to pop loose or a tooth to break or maybe we drop a tooth and the patient then aspirates it. And when this happens, that's a major problem. So this can be difficult to retrieve and it can involve major surgery. What you want to do, and I'm going to teach you four techniques for doing this, is get that in place at the start of the procedure. Take it out only once the tooth is finally out of the mouth and there's no more bits or fragments that have to be removed. So one technique that's very, very easy to do is to take the 4x4 four four gauze, which is those big gauze pads that you might have in your office. If you don't, you can get them, and it's good to have them on hand for other purposes as well that we talk about in other videos. But the 4x4 four four gauze can basically be rolled up into a long kind of sausage or cigar shape, and what you're going to do is you're going to put the bottom of it under the tongue, and then you're going to wrap it around so that the top of it is lying on top of the tongue. And what I'll usually do is I'll moisten the center part of it so that it sticks together a little bit better and it leaves the edges kind of a little bit fluffed out still so that they have a bit more ability to block the airway. Now this is a nice option but what happens with it is if you're using lots of water it's going to eventually saturate with water, it's going to shrink, it's going to catch in your burr from time to time and it's not overly efficient so it's something that can need to be changed off and on throughout the procedure. It might not last the entire time. If you're worried about a patient aspirating that gauze or swallowing the gauze, which they probably shouldn't, but if you're worried about it, you can tie a floss around the center of it so that you're for sure not going to have that patient lose that into their lungs, which I've actually read about a case of that happening, which is crazy to think, but patients can aspirate just about anything according to this study. Now, when we look at another way to do this, it would be something I do quite frequently, and that would be to use the IsoDry or Isolite system. Now the IsoDry is really nice because it's that bite block which we need anyways when we're taking teeth out, when, especially in the mandible. And it's also good for retracting the tongue and the cheek. It acts as a form of protection from your instruments or your burrs on the cheek or the tongue. It also suctions for us and it even lights the surgical field if you have the Isolite system. So it's a terrific tool to use that will protect the airway and do all those other functions. It also is something that can be modified. So let's say if you have a patient that's a little bit gaggy, you can cut the top off of there when you're working on the bottom and basically then it's not touching the roof of their mouth and sometimes they can tolerate it better and you still get the suction and retraction and the light that you would normally get from it. You can also, if you're doing a lower third molar, say an impaction where you have to raise a flap, you can put it in and basically cut off the buccal segment of that isodryer isolite which then gives you some tongue retraction and suction as well as airway protection and light again if you have that isolite basically to allow you access to the surgical field. Now if we're looking at other choices here for airway protection, we could look at the Weeder Retractor, which is that sweetheart retractor that they call it. It's got that kind of heart-shaped end on it. There's a large and a small version. Basically what you can do with that is you can wrap a 4x4 gauze around it, and then what that does is it makes it a little bit kinder on the tissue, and the gauze acts as a little bit of a abrasive tissue, or a more of a sticky surface, I guess, so that things will stick to there. If you have a filling or restoration that falls in the mouth, it's more likely to get hung up on the gauze than it would be if there's just a weeder retractor there. So you do that, and basically that goes in next to the tongue to retract the tongue in a medial direction, of course, not posteriorly, and you're basically going to be blocking the airway using that retractor. So it's really nice. It can be removed really quickly, very easily, and it's simple to create one in your office as long as you've got one of these retractors. The final thing would be, and this is probably one of my favorites other than the IsoDry or Isolite, but there are certain situations where it's nice to use a sea sponge or there's the Laryngea sponge product. So both of these are essentially sponges that go in next to the tongue and they basically fill the entire area on the palatal and lingual aspect of the teeth. So it blocks the airway, it helps to protect the tongue from any instruments or your burr, the burr doesn't snag on them, ortho brackets won't snag on them. That's very nice about them. If they saturate, you can suction right over top of the suction to clear out the water, or you can just pop it out quick, squeeze it, and then put it back in. So it's a super nice uh, choice. A little bit nicer, I find, than working with that 4x4 gauze because it's very compact, it's easy to squish out when it's saturated, and it just sits in place really, really nicely. What you do is you basically pull the tongue out and to the side away from where you're working, place the sponge in there, and then you can place your retractor over top.